Okay, so First Timothy chapter six, verse twenty. Uh, o Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. By professing it, some have strayed concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. Right. So Timothy uh, has been encouraged, exhorted by Paul, and he's saying, guard what was committed to your trust. Right. Uh, so several things. Uh, Paul reminds him about the gifts. Paul reminds him about um, you know about stirring up the gifts, not neglecting it, about the call and all that, and uh, and several things we can add, saying okay, the revelation, the dreams, um, whatever was committed to us, to our trust, because um, and and Paul is saying God. Okay, so the reason that he's saying God is that there is a very real possibility of whatever was committed could be stolen, taken away, right? Either by deception or by intimidation. Because John 10.10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, so we know that the enemy is a defeated foe. And the only way the stealing, killing, and destroying can happen is uh, by deception, by lies, maybe by discouragement or the permission, or we ourselves opening the door intentionally and giving legal ground for that to happen, right? So um, like Paul writes in Galatians, and he tells it really was, you know, if I build those things that, that were destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. He's talking about the legal, you know, legality, legalistic aspect of adding to salvation, adding to the work of um, faith, um, you know, with man-made rules, etc. Right? What God never intended. So, so, um, so we see that. Um, just one second, sorry. Uh, it's not. It's on. Okay. No, uh -huh, it's on. So, okay. Okay, it's okay. I think we'll see. Sorry about that. So yeah, so um, so the real um, um, possibility of something being stolen okay, if you're not careful. So Paul is saying, God. You know, if, you, if you look at the end of, um, uh, you know, uh, or right through the epistle also, he says, you know, be careful, hold fast. Second Timothy also says the same thing, chapter third, uh, sorry, chapter one, verse 13, hold fast to those things, uh, etc. So um, alerting Timothy to the possibility of things that have been committed being taken away, right? So it's valid for us today. Right? If you look in, look at our lives and then see, you know, that revelation, that teaching, that understanding that I had about certain things, it's not so strong as it used to be. You know, if you if you recollect and say, okay, you know, I used to believe so strongly, but now it's it's a little it's a little shaky now, right? Um, or you know, I used to have this passionate desire to do this, and uh, you know, but now it's a little, I don't know, it's a little laid back, right? So, so the same exhortation is valid for us today. Guard what was committed to our, your trust. You know, it could be the ministry, the church, the people. Um, you know, guard what, be alert and guard, right? So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this exhortation, Lord. Um, that you want us to step up and be alert, be discerning, and guard what you have committed to our trust. Father, we thank you for the things that you've released in our lives, Lord, the call, the gifts, the grace. And Master, we we pray that we'll be careful to nurture and not neglect God. We pray that we'll be careful to, Lord, pursue it, Lord, intentionally pursue these things intentionally, Father God, and um, not grow weary of doing good, Master, and not be discouraged by things that we see around us. But Lord, may our focus on be on you. May our ears hear what the Spirit of God is saying. May our hearing be so tuned to you, God. May our hearing be sharp in the Spirit. May we be sharp in the Spirit. 
and not go dull or jaded or blunt in any way, God. But Lord, we pray that we'll pursue the things that accord with godliness and thereby fulfill the plans and purposes that you have for us, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so um, just one second. Is, it, is this interfering with the audio? Okay. Okay. So let's look at um, chapter 12, right? We've been looking at uh, chapter 11 um, about group think, oh, sorry, not group think, group decision making, right? Um, so today we look at um, emotional and con cultural intelligence. Right? Okay. Are you sharing the screen with you? Okay. So when we look at um, the term quotient, it means uh, a measure. Right, uh, the amount of a particular quality. So I'm sure you've heard the word being used, so IQ or intelligence quotient, um, and EQ, emotional quotient, and so on. Okay, so what is this? This emotional integer intelligence all about, or emotional quotient all about? It's a it's a measure of people's abilities to recognize and manage their emotions. Okay, um, regulate their emotions to you know manage in the sense to beneficially mutually beneficially um, manage their emotions for the common good right so it could mean you know even guide others um, the emotions of other people right um, and so on so the first thing is to recognize and the second one is to to regulate or manage okay now, yes, it is true that when this measure or this ability to recognize and uh, regulate our emotions, if, if that ability is higher or if that ability is there in a person, um, that person finds it easier to you know, uh, form relationships, either one-on-one -on -one or a group, um, to be part of a group even, and to uh, you know uh, socialize and so on, and and when we say it's not just social uh, gatherings we're talking about, it's also about functional groups like teams, uh, organizations, and so on. Okay, so um, so where does this whole thing come from? It comes from the study of human behavior, right? It start, comes from study of uh, uh, how uh, effectively people function as individuals and groups, and so it's a it's a very practical thing, right? that um, when this ability is there about managing one's emotions, we see that, um, yes, uh, there is the ability to function well. Okay? And uh, well, we have, uh, as believers, we have the Holy Spirit in us to help us to develop these things in us. Right? Uh, Ephesians, uh, sorry, Galatians 5, verse 22, 23, the fruit of the Spirit, right? love, joy, peace, Long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. <laughs> Excuse me. So these are all attributes, but we see that there are some emotions as well, like joy, peace, right, um, and and self-control or self-governing ability, which is something that the Holy Spirit desires to bring and develop. In us as individuals, so that's a good that's a good thing, right? So the fruit of the Holy Spirit is to build that. To to and why does He do that? Why is there you know why does the Holy Spirit desire to bring about these attributes in us? Love, joy, peace, right? Why? Um, it is so that we might walk in the Spirit, right? That we will, we might not fulfill the desires of the flesh. That we might be a channel of his blessing like instrument of righteousness a vessel of honor all these things follow right so practically speaking whether it's in a church whether it's in a you know a, a office organization um, to have this self-governing ability to have this emotional intelligence I'm not saying self-governing ability is equal to emotional intelligence, but to have this 
uh, ability in us and to grow this you know develop it is an important uh, important thing okay so let's look at some of these elements of emotional intelligence okay so um, daniel goldman he uh, human behavior you know person who studies that and the author and so on he's uh, divided emo emotional intelligence into personal and social abilities or social skills like something that i need to know personally and something that i can um, i can apply it while relating to others right? personal and social skills okay when you look at personal skills three things that we can look at self awareness <clears throat> self regulation self motivation okay self awareness self regulation self motivation so what does self awareness means to be emotionally aware of what i'm going through what am i feeling like if you look at a child, like I uh, recently, you know, uh, like our, my, our nephew growing up, and he would throw tantrums because he was not aware of what he was going through, right? Um, maybe four years old, maybe even younger. At that stage, I remember he would be hungry, but he wouldn't. He wasn't aware that it was the hunger which was causing causing all this frustration, or he'd be sleepy. And uh, it was ca causing a lot of frustration for him. And so he would throw up a tantrum, right? behave badly, uh, cry, you know, disobey, uh, etc. all those things. And, uh, and babies do that. Right? Babies are not able to communicate what they're feeling uh, emotionally. And uh, they th throw up all tantrums. They're not, and as they grow up, as they become aware, of these things happening in them, they're able to process it differently. Okay, so emotional awareness. Sometimes we grow up physically, but emotionally, we are not really aware of those things going on in our lives. Right? Maybe we grow up, we get up, and we're in a bad mood. Okay, does it happen only to me, or does it happen to others also? Obviously, you know, we get up and we're in a bad mood for no reason. Right? So, what do we do? Right? Uh, am I going to just spend the whole day just shouting at people or going out with a frown in my face? Or am I going to reflect and think, hey, something's not right. Why did I wake up this way? Right? I need to change. I need to focus on things that are good, focus on the future. Maybe uh, I had a bad dream. Maybe I had you know, some bad thoughts waking up. Or it's just a physiological thing, right? Just grow up, go, wake, woke up. Maybe there's a there's a cough or cold, etc. <laughs> whatever, and uh, you're 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 not your best self. Be aware, emotionally aware. Right? Being emotionally aware is also uh, understanding our emotions. Okay? Understanding this is what I'm feeling right now, and I'm not. I'm I can't just go with the flow. Okay? I'm feeling fear. Maybe I'm feeling anger. Uh, I'm feeling irritation. Um, knowing, first of all, being aware of it, right? I'm feeling this thing rising up, this anger rising up. Hey, be aware of it. Take a deep breath. I count to hundred if you need to, right? Um, and uh, uh, and not make any hasty judgments, decisions, right? So emotional awareness. Second thing is accurate self-assessment. Right. So when we assess ourselves, assess our feelings, assess our uh, emotions accurately, right? Not in a biased manner. Right. So our actions uh, will follow through. Right. So you, you just, for example, you know, some people are, you know, uh, I'm also guilty of that. Right. You're feeling emotionally low and you, you, you want to feel good. So you do something like right? you just maybe eat something. You're not hungry. <clears throat> it's not that you're hungry, but you're emotionally feeling low and you want to feel good. So you eat some things that you don't, you know, maybe eat an ice cream, maybe eat some chocolates, maybe eat some junk food, you know. And it's not like you are hungry, but you eat. It's an emotional eating. Right. And it's a, <clears throat> wrong assessment of ourself. It's not an accurate self-assessment, right? and because of which uh, 
it's it's a it's not a since it's not an actress uh, it's fine okay 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 and since it's not an accurate accurate assessment our action is also not you know in line right so effective self assessment is important and also to motivate oneself right okay um the second thing um to motivate oneself out of that right um second thing is self regulation okay so self regulation is how do i now this is how i'm feeling self awareness uh, you're aware of it okay so self regulation is now what do i do about it right what do i do about it and each, each of us can have some personal strategies and uh, and this is very simple in the scriptures it talks about walk in the spirit okay um and you know we know it's a process we know it's a relationship but practically how do we do that you know how do we regulate ourselves how do we manage our emotions our abilities our impulses and so on okay so this whole thing of self control right um self control doesn't mean that i pretend that something some pain is not there or i pretend that i'm not hurt or i'm pretend that i'm not irritated i pretend that i'm disappointed no self control uh, or is is not stuffing those emotions um or just you know just putting them away but to to actually um recognize it and say and be truthful and say yes this is how i'm feeling right so that's the thing unless i recognize and i accept right this is how i'm feeling how do i go beyond that and we can't fix something or we can't um uh, address something that we say i don't have right so if this anger if there's disappointment then then we can at least at least work on it and say okay this is how i'm feeling but this is what i i will do now and i will not give vent to it which will result in you know consequences which are unrighteous but how do i i i am at this place now how do i work on it okay so self control so knowing that i should not take some decisions now right now you know i'm feeling angry i'm feeling upset uh, now is not the right time to make some very important decisions right or decisions regarding that situation this person has done this um they said that they'll be there they are not there uh i need to decide something about you know uh maybe some request that has come from that person and uh, you know all this is there piled up so in my emotions i'm 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 feeling that you know maybe i i should i should not deal fairly right tempted so that is not the time to make a decision uh, because we will we will react or respond in a way not proportional to that particular problem right our response will be not proportional disproportionate right i'm sure many times we have faced that problem where you know somebody said something and we and we reacted to them in anger and they they are like stunned you know why why are you why why do you need to do this it's not such a big thing and the, and the way it, it has happened is it's because you know it was it's been piling up maybe or you know it has not been dealt with right uh it has not been addressed and therefore that that final thing that small thing which they said or did um really cost us to explode right explode so disproportionate response or reaction okay so um um so to to really have that sense of um self governing ability so again just want to reiterate self governing ability to be you know not be stressed and to be cool etc it's it, it's not that we don't uh address or agree that we are feeling these emotions right we are not giving vent to those emotions we are not acting in line with those emotions we deal with it right the, and we have as believers we have the resources of god's word and the holy spirit who's always with us so we are 
placed in a far better way, in a better manner, in a better place to deal with these things. Right? OK, then trustworthiness. OK, trustworthiness. Uh, we are talking about, again, self-regulation. Trustworthiness is, is our ability to maintain our integrity and truth, uh, our values, irrespective of the environment. Okay, um, so so to, the question is to ask, you know, reflect and ask, you know, can I trust myself? Right? Um, and can I trust myself in these situations? Can I trust myself? To, to you know, to stand in for me, to be my substitute. Just think of that, right? I, I don't, you know, can I trust myself to do that? Can I tr trust myself to be there to help out? To just step out and say, okay, can I trust myself to do it? Trustworthiness, right? Um, in all situations, in all environments, our ability to be steadfast, ability to maintain biblical values and integrity and so on, right? Um, so that also is another aspect of self-regulation, right? Now, that is something, again, we know it comes with um, so building strength, right? It comes with knowing the truth, and it comes from a heart of obedience, right? Where we follow through. Um, no matter what, right? It comes from a place of obedience. Um, the third aspect of it is con conscientiousness, which means to um, to take responsibility for ourselves, right? To take responsibility, um, to own, to take responsibility, meaning to own certain things. You know, I own this act. I own. I take ownership of uh, my own behavior and speech and action and so on, taking ownership for it, being accountable. So if I'm not taking ownership or responsibility, then you know I might behave in a certain way. Right. So for example, how does it practically work out, you know, in terms of our commitments? Right? We tell people, I'll do this, I'll be there, I'll give this Right, keeping our commitment and our promise. Right? If you are not able to to communicate that or to communicate upfront that hey, there's been a change in the commitment, right? So that is taking ownership. So it it all boils down to, or it all links up to emotional intelligence right? to have that ability to regulate. You know, the thing is keeping commitments. For example, you know. There might be many reasons why we are not able to, right? But and and it's it's all valid reasons, probably, very valid. You know, we've we've done our best, tried our best, whatever, and very valid reasons why we are not able to keep up some commitment. So, or a promise, you know, uh, and it can be a work situation, being able to deliver, etc. So, so how do we handle that? That is most emotional, sorry, intelligence, right? How do we handle that? Um, do we communicate in advance? Do we, do we preempt, right? It all links to emotional intelligence rather than arriving at that point of, uh, you know, the commitment not being honored and being questioned and being defensive, right? So somebody, you know, in, in a typical work situation, somebody would ask, right, you know, whom you, whomever you're accountable to, over, who was your overseer boss will ask, why was this not done, right? When we when we cross over uh, or we cross the deadline, and you know, why was this not done? You were told to do it. You said you will do it. This is understanding that you would do this by this time. So why was this not done, right? So. Um, so the thing is that maybe we forgot completely, right? It's a possibility. You had so many things, 10 things to do, this one thing, this ninth thing completely missed, right? So um, the thing is to, to communicate that and not get defensive and say, uh, no, I never knew, right? Because when you get defensive and we're not self-regulating, you know, this whole thing of integrity and ethics, we, are, we want to defend ourselves. So I never knew that. You never told me that, right? 
So we are being, being uh, not people of integrity, right? Or blaming, saying, okay, that person did this, that therefore uh, it delayed and so on, right? So uh, conscientiousness, right? Keeping commitments, taking responsibility, um, uh, etc. Right? This helps to uh, self-regulate. Yeah. Um, just moving down to uh, being flexible to adapt to circumstances. You know, the thing is that nothing is very idealistic or ideal. Right? There's no ideal circumstance. Um, we plan some things, and there's always some unknown factors in it. Right? We plan according to what we know. But when it comes to implementation of the plan, right? when we come to actually do, carry out that plan, whether it's uh, in ministry, whether it's in work situations, we, we know that there are certain unforeseen factors, unknown factors that that affect the, um, the working out of that plan, right? implementation of it. So how quickly can we adapt to it? So this adaptability, rather than saying, oh, no, this is what it is. I expected it to be you know, all good. And uh, and that's it. I'm packing. I'm going back. Now that is not emotional intelligence, right? So um, so a person without or low levels of emotional intelligence would would respond in that manner, saying that this is what I expected, and you know, therefore now I'm 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 just not going to be, uh, you know, uh, be flexible, whatever. Um, so being flexible, adapting to change, right? Um, in the area of maybe you know um, maybe our time <clears throat> uh, prioritizing uh, time and uh, making some changes scheduling things uh, etc um, use of our resources right so all this would happen um, and we need to we need to have that ability um, I'm not saying that. Uh, sorry, I'm not saying that we we need to be flexible to the point where we compromise on everything we stand for. Right. So there are certain things that are that we cannot compromise on. Right. There are non-compromising, you know, set of standards, values, whatever. We will not compromise on. Um, so those are set in stone. Right. Integrity. You know what 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 values to be stand for not compromising on truth etc but when it comes to adapting to certain situations or being creative and that's the next thing you know innovation um, how quickly can we adapt to new ideas how flexible are we to adapt to new ideas and changes uh, changes in the changes in the environment right changes in the marketplace changes in the way we do ministry etc um you know i i, and I think um right this whole pandemic you know, taught us some important lessons right and uh, the way we look at uh, uh, technology and the way it's really changing the phase of how we do things right if we were to get stuck and be you know um, be very very um what's the word uh, yeah, um, not willing to change, you know, not willing to adapt, not willing to change. Then we will be, we will, we will become uh, obsolete, right? Not very useful, not very relevant. Okay. Again, I just wanted to say that you know we're not talking about compromising on standards, compromising on truth, okay? Compromising on the message, especially when we talk about ministry. We're not talking about that at all. Right, but adapting to the environment, adapting to the way technology is used, and so on. Right, for example, so those are things that we need to be flexible about. Right, so innovation, etc. Um, so this whole argument of this is the way we did things, and this is how we will continue to do, um, is it is a dangerous one. Right? So we need to kind of explore and see. Okay, is there any you know, that the new way of doing things well does it change our core values does it change the truth of what we're doing are we making any compromises there are we diluting right the message of what we are um, communicating if not we can actually do that right so self-regulation very important 
The third aspect of it is, third uh, element is self-motivation. Okay, so we're looking at personal skills, right? Um, so self-awareness, self-regulation, self-motivation. So um, self-motivation would be to one to to not really, you know, of course, we are a community, we are the body of Christ, and um, we the Lord does use others, like we see in one Corinthians twelve, to to we are knit in such a way that we there are others who bring strength to us even as we bring strength to others, <laughs> excuse me, even as we bring strength to others, minister to others, right? But if our reliance is solely on others to carry out whatever we need to do, like we might go through a season of that, right? Maybe we are, we are, maybe we are hurt, maybe we are damaged, maybe we are... Um, you know, we, we have gone through certain things and we need to rest, recover, be restored to a place of strength. That's fine. But if our whole life we are solely dependent, reliant, heavily dependent on others to tell us what is to be done, to cheer us on every day, just like how, would, how we would, you know, so children, right? Wow. You finished your dosa, you finished your... Well, there's only one bit left. So the, the parents were said, well, there's only one bit left. Come on, let's do it. If, it, if that's, you know, that's at a certain stage is fine. But if that's going to be the thing throughout, right, uh, then there's a problem, right? So we need to motivate ourselves. So that's a sign of emotional intelligence where we say, okay, I need to plan things out. Right? I need to set the alarm. I need to get up. I need to plan. I need to self-govern and not really depend on others all the time. Okay, um, so it might involve improving oneself, achieving things, um, our goals, our personal goals, our corporate goals, uh, commitment to it, and um, and so on. Right, uh, toughness in facing situations. So we looked at three things, right? Self-awareness, self-regulation, uh, and self-motivation. Okay, so three elements very important for our personal lives. Okay, so maybe when we, you know, even when we listen to it, we see, okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm not there, fully there yet. Okay, so it's a sign that we need to work on, okay, or uh, develop on, um, and um, grow in that area. Okay, so when it comes to social skills, which means involving others. Okay, it's just, you're not just by yourself anymore, but when when in interacting with people socially, here are some skills that we can look at. First one being empathy. Okay, so empathy uh, is an awareness of the needs and feelings of others. Okay, maybe it's an individual or maybe it's a group of people. An awareness of that, of the needs of others, awareness of the feelings of others. Okay, so. Um, do we have that that ability okay that awareness uh, that people could be let, let's say you know you're, you're 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 arranging a meeting and you're and you you know the content to you is so exciting and that you want to just go on and on and on but uh, you know if, if there's no empathy about what the others could be going through okay um, well they need a break to refresh they need a break maybe they need to you know, use the washrooms. They need to have a drink of water. They need to have something, some nourishment, right? So if we are not empathetic about that, if you are not even aware of that, you know, this could be a very genuine thing. We'd be like, you know, I don't feel that. So why should they? You know, sometimes we, we do that, you know, I'm strong. I, I'm, I can just go on. You know? uh, but we need to be empathetic towards the needs of others, towards what they are feeling. Right. So um, and, you know, some of us could be sensitive to the social cues of people, okay? to the cues of people. Maybe people are getting restless. That's a cue. And uh, if we are empathetic, we pick up that cue. Maybe people are feeling, you know, not with it. They're not tracking. They're not following. That's a cue. Right. So these are. These are important um, aspects for us to develop. 
um, it's a skill that we need to develop, right? Um, especially as uh, you know, spiritual maybe spiritual leaders, and uh, we need to be, have that ability of being empathetic, being able to be aware. And I've heard of people saying, you know, I, I honestly don't know. I don't I don't have that skill. You know, and it's and it's a um, and it's sometimes it's a medical condition also, right? There are some some syndromes and certain symptoms because of which uh, the way the brain is wired and so on. And so they don't pick up those social cues. They, they don't pick up the thing that, hey, this person is irritated or this person is hurt by what I'm saying. They don't, they don't pick up, they don't read emotions, right? That's one extreme case. Um, you know, why, why are, and they, they're making a joke and it's about someone and they're feeling hurt. But then this person feels that I'm, I'm, I'm actually saying something funny. Why are they not laughing? Right. So they're not picking up those cues. Right. So understanding others, uh, having a mindset uh, to serve, um, to help out. Right. Um, you see a situation where everybody's doing something and they are all chipping in and but you feel that okay this is not my place this is not my role so i'm not going to do that right um, you don't want to serve you don't want to help and so on right so uh, be able to understand others in simple terms right okay how can i practically apply this um, we looked at that you know the the listening part you know, we looked at various ways by which we can listen actively right um, non verbal message what are the gestures? Um, listen actively, not passively. You know, um, not just the words that people are communicating, but how they communicate. Right? Are we? Are you listening? Are you aware of the tone in which they are using? Right? And there are a lot of jokes, right, about husband and wife communication, where the hu husband goes and asks the wife, "Hey, can I can I go and um, you know uh, play uh, football with the guys or watch football? Watch the match with the guys?" today you know and the wife says yeah sure go go yeah that's the tone yeah go and the husband is like wow thank you <laughs> he's going but the wife actually is very upset right so but she didn't uh, and she showed it in her tone but the word said go and the husband comes back the wife is very upset so husband asks why what's the problem Nothing. Nothing's the problem. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure everything's OK? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> so the words are, everything's OK. The words are, I'm fine. But the tone says that it is not fine. It's absolutely, something is terribly wrong. right? So if one can pretend not to you know, <laughs> hear the tone and uh, pretend everything is OK, um, but the fact is that something's wrong, right? So to be able to listen actively, what is the tone in which they are saying, communicating, and what are the words? What is the message that they are communicating? Is there a disconnect in both, in 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 you know, in the tone and the message? Then is there something's wrong, right? So to to hone that skill of um, uh, being able to read that, okay, okay. The other uh, very practical thing is to use use questions, right? Um, empathetic questions, trying to understand. Okay, I'm not getting it. Are you sure? Right? I'm not understanding this. Is there anything wrong? Is there anything that's uh, that I should be knowing? Uh, is everything okay? So use questions to find out, to draw out that other person, and because it, we are talking about um, other people, and it maybe it's a group. Right, so to understand, okay, is everyone okay with this? Is everyone okay um, uh, going forward? Right, how does everyone feel about this? So, yeah, so we do that. Then, um, what about times when we disagree? Okay, now, yeah, uh, I need to be empathetic. I need to understand. But what if I don't dis? I don't agree. Right, uh, I know that from the place from which. You know, uh, someone is saying things. It's it's not from a place of truth. It's not something that we should be pursuing. So you know, I I, I disagree completely. So uh, we can disagree, right? But we don't have to disagree 
in a disrespectful manner. Right? We don't have to disagree um, and hurt the dignity of the other person. Okay, so that is something that we need to. We don't have to put down the person in our disagreement. We don't have to reject the person. We don't have to dishonor the person in our disagreement. We can disagree with the with the thought. We can disagree with what the person is saying uh, or the idea that they are sharing without doing all of that, right? Um, so, so that's something that we can. I think that is something that all of us will probably we need to learn, like to speak the truth in love. Right? That's a, that's that's what scripture says: speak the truth in love. So it's something that we need to grow, uh, and there's always space for growth in this area, right? Because our emotions, which was what we are talking about, our emotions do not permit us to do that, right? Our emotions are so so stirred up that we want to. So we want to give vent to our emotions, and in doing so, we want to cut down the person, dishonor the person, um, you know, and and kind of, you know, um, whatever dignity is there. We don't want to tear it to shreds, right? Okay. Other things that we can look at is, uh, um, are we questions we can ask? Am I a person easy to talk to? Am I approachable? Right. If you notice that people are hesitating, oh, should I? Should I not? Why is it? Is it because I make fun of them? Is it because I explored? Is it because I start my statement with no? Right. Somebody comes in and says, "Can we?" No. But am I an easy person to talk to? When they're talking, do I do I actually listen? Right. So these are things. Right. Am I an easy person to talk to? Am I a good listener? Uh, can people confide in me? Right? Can you, know, you might be wondering why? Why? Why is nobody you know sharing things? And I want to help. Um, why are they not talking? You know, at the heart of it, I want to help. So these are questions to ask. Okay. So when we do these things, right, by being a good person, easy person to talk to, approachable, by being good listeners, uh, etc., uh, we're not saying that we are people pleasing. Okay, that's a different thing altogether. Right. When it's people pleasing, it's like, hey, I want to say things you want to hear. I want to do things that you want, you know, you want to be done um, in order to make you feel good. Right. And and in doing so, I want approval. My self-worth and everything depends on that. Right. I want approval. I want you, I want you to like me. I want you to, you know, irrespective of whatever it is, even if it if it means that there's a bending of truth. Or there is speaking of lies, untruths, flattery. I want to do that so that I get your approval. Now that is people pleasing, right? So we're not talking about people pleasing. Okay. So the foundation is, you know, we're not compromising on that stand of truth and all that, um, but by being people who are approachable, easy to talk to, knowing that yes, this person will speak the truth, but he'll speak it in love, not make fun. I can go. To him or her, and um, you know, be heard, right? Okay. So the the second one is cultural intelligence. Okay, probably we'll look at it uh, next class. It's uh, it's a small topic where uh, talking about culture, and uh, maybe we we'll look at some practical ex examples of different cultures and how knowing that culture helps us. Okay, helps us to uh, bridge certain gaps. Helps us to um, you know to function well. Like knowing the culture, being able to even like minister cross culturally and so on, right? So we'll stop here, um, and then we'll meet next class. Okay, uh, we will also have our tests coming up um, this week, so it'll be for the online students. You can expect those questions to come up. Uh, thing for in person, of course, it'll be online all again. Um, online students, you'll have about three four days to turn in your. Um, answers. If you're an e-learning student, you will have the end of term. Um, that's the date before which you need to turn in your um, quiz answers. Right. Okay. Thank you. God bless. See you.